The following evening, Fraser arrived at the entrance to the San Clemente University in Sheila's car. As he watched hordes of young, excited faces pouring out of the building, he felt nostalgic. He'd enjoyed his four years studying there. They had been four of the happiest years of his life, especially the last two when he had met Natalia. He fell for her the moment he saw her, and there was no turning back or looking at another woman since. Fraser waited for over 20 minutes before a beautiful young girl exited the front door. She had a long ponytail and wore a yellow dress and an elegant white coat. Heads turned as she walked. Fraser got out of the car and waved to her. She was Natalia's younger sister, Lynn, and they were strikingly similar in appearance. Where's Natalia? She asked as she got into the car without any form of greeting. She flung her bag onto the back seat. I thought she was picking me up. She's gone straight to the restaurant from work, he replied, used to her dismissive attitude toward him. He got into the driver's seat and started the engine. What's my sister still doing with a low-life scumbag like you? She asked, glaring at him as he drove out of the parking lot. He smiled, refusing to rise to the bait. Her continual mocking of him no longer upset him. Natalia had chosen a European restaurant for dinner that evening. It was her favorite, and Fraser had booked a private dining room for their meal. It was a short drive from the university to the restaurant, and neither spoke until they reached their destination. Lynn rushed ahead before Fraser had even finished parking the car. She quickly found the private room where Natalia and Sheila were waiting for her. Finally, said Natalia, pleased to see her sister. I've been waiting for ages for you. A loud bang prevented Lynn from replying. A passing waiter had accidentally bumped into Lynn, spilling an entire glass of red wine onto her white coat. Even Natalia had a few spots on her dress. <gasps> I'm so sorry, said the waiter, his face crimson with embarrassment. He pulled a tissue out of his pocket and offered it to her, hoping it might soak up some of the wine. It's okay, you didn't mean it, said Natalia, as she also took a tissue out of her purse to help mop up the mess. What is it? asked the manager, running over when he noticed the fuss. He saw the red wine on Lynn's coat and turned to the waiter. What have you done? he asked angrily. It's okay, it was an accident, said Natalia, frightened that the waiter would lose his job. I'm sorry, ma'am, the waiter said again. Don't worry, said Natalia. You're not to blame. I'm sorry, sir, said the waiter while bowing down to his manager's direction. I hope you'll forgive us, said the manager. May I offer you a few complimentary side dishes as a token of our apology? Of course, that would be very kind, said Natalia, smiling graciously at him. Another waiter appeared at the door. Sir? There's someone looking for you, he said before whispering something in the manager's ear. The manager looked embarrassed. Oh, sorry, I have something to attend to, so I won't disturb you any longer. He nodded and turned to leave. As they watched the manager leave, Natalia continued to wipe Lynn's dress. She had barely finished before the first waiter appeared again, this time holding a tray. It contained several dishes, including lobster and caviar, as well as an expensive-looking bottle of red wine. Fraser arrived after parking the car, and they all sat down and started to eat. Another waiter came with another tray of food, much to Lynn's delight. Wow, said Sheila. I'm going to bump into a waiter every time I come here. She hadn't paid attention as the waiter had closed the door behind him. The manager was peeping over the waiter's shoulder with a cruel smile. As the door closed, the manager returned to the kitchen. Krina McKenzie was waiting for him. Miss McKenzie, are you pleased with what I've done? He asked her. Well done, she said, before she returned to the office and sat down. Fraser looked at the array of dishes in front of him, but his appetite had deserted him. He felt that something wasn't quite right. 
Do you know the manager? He asked Natalia. No, but one of his staff did ruin Lynn's dress, she replied. I think they've made amends in a fair manner, she added, indicating the spread before them and instantly stuffing some caviar into her mouth. It's just that there are some really expensive dishes on the table, he said. Glancing around, he noticed no one was listening to him. This is a Michelin star restaurant, he added. This food would cost way more than Lynn's dress. Lynn glared at him. Stop it, Frasia, said Natalia. She was very protective of her sister. Maybe it's the policy. He gave up. He knew that Natalia and Lynn weren't going to listen to him. Watching how Sheila had already begun digging into their feast, he decided to join them instead. Barely a morsel of food was left by the time they had finished. Natalia called for the bill, which the waiter brought very promptly. A little too promptly, thought Fraser. If you have a loyalty card, there's a 20% discount, he said as he handed her the small piece of paper. Prina stood outside the door, waiting for the fireworks to begin. Natalia took the bill off the waiter and unfolded it. I, I think you've given us the wrong bill, she said as she handed it back to him. We haven't eaten that much. Her hands were shaking as she returned the paper to him. What's the matter? asked Lynn, noticing the look on her sister's face. She snatched the bill from the waiter and looked shocked upon reading the final amount. Her eyes widened in surprise. How much? Sheila's jaw dropped when she heard the amount. It's a joke, she said, quickly recovering her composure. Very funny, she said sarcastically to the waiter. There are four of you, and you picked the most expensive dishes on the menu, said the waiter calmly. You picked our finest lobster, caviar, escargot, and more. Don't forget the bottle of red wine you chose, which costs hundreds of dollars alone. Now you're wrong, said Sheila bluntly. The manager gave us that, remember? Yes, agreed Natalia. Could you call him over? There's been a misunderstanding. The words were barely out of her mouth when the manager walked into the room, a little too quickly for Fraser's liking. Is there a problem? He asked brightly. Yes, said Natalia, standing up. We didn't order these dishes. What do you mean? He asked the smile on his face vanishing. Have you eaten someone else's meal? No, said Sheila, her temper beginning to get the better of her. You gave us these dishes as a peace offering because your waiter ruined Lynn's dress. But now you're trying to charge us for them. That's right, said the manager innocently. I did offer you some side dishes, he added, emphasizing the word side. Sheila glanced at the small salad dishes on the table. The joke's over, said Lynn. Stop messing with us. I don't know what you're talking about, said the manager smoothly. Are you forcing us to pay for all this, demanded Natalia, her face turning ugly. Are you accusing me of forcing this food on you, asked the manager, his tone becoming much frostier. If you don't pay, I'll call the police. You deliberately tricked us, argued Sheila. I'm not paying you a single cent until I've spoken to the person in charge. I am the person in charge, said the manager. He glowered at her. Actually, I'm the person in charge here, said a voice from the doorway. Crino walked in, enjoying making an entrance. She smiled graciously. Ah, oh, I get it now, said Natalia. It's you. Miss McKenzie, they're refusing to pay the bill, said the manager, pretending to complain. Why? she asked Natalia. Don't you have enough money? Security, she shouted. If you don't pay up, I'm afraid you won't be able to leave she added as three security guards rushed in. The three women looked at one another. Several other diners had gathered at the door, causing Lynn's face to blush with embarrassment. 
What should we do? She said, looking at Natalia. Natalia didn't answer. Her mind was whirring as she tried to decide. Although she had some savings, it was nowhere near enough to pay the bill. Even if she ran all her credit cards up to their limits, it still wouldn't cover the amount. She sighed and opened her purse. Frazier had watched the whole affair quietly, not impressed with how quickly Natalia had caved. He walked over to Krina. Miss McKenzie, he said politely. Is this how you do business? Who are you to teach me how to do business? Krina replied sharply. Don't be rude to me. Pay your bill and get lost. To watch the full episode, install the Pocket FM app.